Welcome back everyone. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at how to model a free damped vibration in FEMAP. Okay, let's get started. Here's our problem callout. We have all the data that we need. We're going to have an initial velocity but no initial displacement. And down here we see that we have zeta given three different values from which we need to calculate our damping ratio. Okay, let's go to FEMAP and get started. We're gonna go to model, node, first node we'll do it at 0, 0, second one at 1, 0. Okay, cancel, let's do control Q. I want to see the node identities, there it is, 1 and 2. Let's go set up our property. We're going to need, I'm going to put here my spring element property type. We're going to pick spring damper. There you go. Click OK. And here, the stiffness, it was given to us right here. K, 100 Newton meters. Put in 100 Newton meters and we need to enter our damping. So remember that uh, they did not give it to us in our problem callout, so we're gonna have to go and calculate it for ourselves. So, zeta is 5%. That means the damping ratio, right, zeta, and it is 0 0.05 from 5%. We have the formulas for the damping ratio and for the critical damping constant, which is down here. We know everything in this one, 4 times mass times k, these two were given. We can calculate our c, which is what we need to enter in FEMAP, our damping constant, damping ratio, damping constant, there you go. And uh, 0 0.05 times the square root of mass times k, c equals 0 0.5. So we're going to go ahead and plug this into FEMAP, right here, 0 0.5. 0 0.5 or 0 0.05? 0 0.5. 0 0.5, okay. 0 0.5 and uh, C bush, make sure, sure this one is selected and that should be it. Okay. Cancel it out. Next we're gonna set up our element, model, element, go to property, select the property that we just set up, my spring, between nodes 1 and 2. You could select it uh, with the mouse as well, but we know their identities because it's very simple for us. Okay, cancel, and there's our spring damper setup. Now we're gonna go ahead and set up our boundary conditions. Go to model, constraint, nodal. Let's call it BC. Okay, click on the left one, number one, Okay, here, let's call it left, we're gonna pin it, click OK, on the left hand side, click OK, and let's put right, we're gonna allow translation in the X direction, but nothing in the Y or Z, click OK, cancel, there you go. Next, let's add our point mass, we'll be, which will be right here at uh, node number 2. So, go back to properties. I'm going to call it mass. Element property type. Uh, right here, other elements, mass. Okay, this is a zero dimensional finite element. Okay, so we're going to come here and enter its mass and that's it. Click OK. Cancel. Now we're going to go back to model and create an element that's going to relate the point mass to node number 2. Property, pick the mass and node number 2 right here. There you go. And OK. Cancel. Now the mass is connected to node number 2. Now we can go ahead and apply our initial conditions.
So we need to remember that there's no such option here that calls for initial velocity or initial uh, displacement, but we can set these up under load. So load nodal. Let's call these initial conditions. Okay. We're gonna apply it to node two. Okay. It's gonna be initial velocity. And in here we're gonna be able to have the option to set up our initial velocity. Okay, so just remember you need to go under loads to set up your initial velocity. And the component in the x direction is gonna be 0 0.01 and that should be it. Click OK and there you go. The symbol for initial velocity appeared. Very good. Cancel that out. Okay, we've entered everything that we need to enter, so we are ready to perform our analysis. We'll go back to model analysis and new. Call it down no one. And down here, make sure you pick not static, but number three, transient dynamic time history. Okay, click OK. In here, we need to do some adjustments. Under options, go to dynamics, see we have not defined. Go here and in our time uh, area, transient time setup intervals, we need to enter what we want. This is a transient uh, simulation, that means it's gonna progress as time passes. So, number of steps. I wanna mimic, let's see, 500 time steps. I want a uh, time step of 0 0.01. No, 0, 0, 0.01. I think that's what our problem called for. And output interval. I'm gonna leave it as one. This is just calling for how many times do we wanna print out our result. If we want a nice smooth curve, we're gonna put it uh, every single calculation, give me the result. If you're doing a big calculation of thousands and thousands of uh, uh, calculations, most likely you will not put it at 1, maybe you put it at 10, it will be fine. So you can save uh, computational space, time, and such. And we are done with this one, click OK. That one is done. Now we have to go under Master and Boundary Conditions. Open Boundary Conditions. Here on constraints, make sure BC is connected. I mean BC, whatever you named your boundary conditions, I named it BC. Under loads, this is not correct. We do not have any loads, so pick none. And initial conditions, we have IC. That's what we named our initial conditions. Remember, right here on the left, you can, if you forgot, make sure you check it in your model tree. Okay, and that's it. Very good. If you want, you can go to preview input. And over here, these are the Nastran cards. We have some videos on Nastran cards. If you want to understand these a little bit more, make sure you check them out. But just a little check. Here you can check your initial conditions. This one is our initial velocity. This empty space is a zero because our displacement, initial displacement is zero. So there you go. You can do other types of checks as well. So if you want to understand them, check out our video on uh, Nestrian cards, FEMAP cards. And we're ready to click our analyze button. Let the solver do its thing. and complete. Very good. That's what we wanted to hear. No errors. So we are done with our processing. So let's go ahead and graph. Go to chart right here. We have a chart uh, tool open. Go here. New data series. Here put uh, displacement versus time for the title. Here we're gonna pick vector versus set, output set value. I'm gonna put, we have translation in the x direction, 
T1 is translation X direction, so make sure you select that. And location is at our node number 2, right? That's where we had the action going. And OK. And let it think about it and graph it. We don't need anything else done. And there it is. And as we can tell, we have a damped motion, right? Because these peaks get smaller and smaller and smaller as time goes on. There you go. And also, if you click here, you can check. Whoa. Let's go back to the beginning. Zoom in. Remember, our initial displacement was zero. And if you want to check, the slope of this curve here at the zero point times zero is our initial velocity, which should be 0 0.1. That's what we set it up as, right? All right, well, that should be it. This is how we graph simple harmonic motion with a damper on it. If you want, go ahead and uh, calculate your damping ratio for 100%, 130, and redo the exercise. You'll see how the graph will change. Very good. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe, and have a great day.